What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we're taping on the second floor of the historic Lincoln Building, new home of Cascade Media Group. Today's special guest is a former city councilman. He has worked as a commissioner for Tax Increment Financing Commission and formerly served as the chairman of the Planning, Zoning, and Economic Development Committees for the KCMO City Council from 1991 to 1992, two terms of Mayor Emanuel Cleaver, uh, Mayor Ship. He is currently the principal for Urban Initiatives and chapter president of the Beta Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha. He also has a new talk show that will be debuting on Kansas City, what's up KansasCity.net, that will cover community, politics, housing, yes. and economic development. Mr. Ken Backus, after I've said all that, we're <laughs> glad that you still want to talk to us. Well, you know, you can just keep on going, young man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm very pleased to be here and really excited about an opportunity to bring uh, interest in guests and talk about the variety of topics that you just articulated. The best is yet to come. Do you know when you're going to premiere your show? I think within the next week or so. All right, we brought you here today to talk about economic development. Can you give us a definition of what economic development is? And then we're going to try to relate that to the 18th and Vine economic development process. But the whole term economic development has as its found in the, the bringing up of the improving the quality of life of people and community. And actually for the United States, uh, that is basically began as a movement from an agrarian or an ag agricultural reform of the economy to the industrial age uh, and now into the technolo techno technological age and computing age of where we are today. So it's come all over the place. And so when you move from uh, the cornfield, for example, uh, to a place where you build in technology and design and computer chips, that's where we've come. And our, our nation and our community are the results of all of those experiences. Now, when you say uh, agriculture, I get the picture of Alex Haley Roots Next Generation with the yes. dad was out working with the farmers and such. Some would say, you also mentioned computer chips, some would say the 18th and Vine area, we are as far as away from Silicon Valley as possible. Um, really more is possible. I remember when I was in high school, I was a senior, junior, uh, Mayor Cleaver was pumping money into the economy, trying to get yes. 18th and Vine up and viable. Where are we now, in your opinion, and where do we need to go? Well, is there something we aren't doing, something we should be doing? Yeah, I think so. 18th and Vine has just really evolved, and evolved from the $28 million we put here in terms of the Jazz Museum, the Negro Leagues Museum, the Gym Theater, and then we were able to successfully get developers to come in and, and place housing, uh, multi-family housing, to up, place housing above yeah. all the commercials. So that in addition to the $28 million, there's an additional probably 70 to $80 million more in housing that's been developed into the area. But still, that's not enough. If you drive uh, Vine Street south of 18th Street, it's almost nothing. I mean, those old buildings are just sitting there. It used to be... Uh, barbecue places, etc., and there's a motorcycle shop there. Over on Holland, it's still it's been redeveloped. Those houses have been redeveloped. It still needs some work. And then if you go down um, 18th Street on the south side, uh, uh, just past Holland, all those buildings, those are just facades up there. There's no building behind there. So we need a lot more density. We need businesses back in the area to employ people, uh, and we need uh, uh, more. Uh, market rate type housing to support, then those market rate homes then could support more of the restaurants and the other activities in the area. So, and we need a clearer vision. We developed a plan for the 18th and Vine District back in 2010, and I wrote the economic development piece of it and the housing piece. So, we, uh, we defined an area along Vine Street, south of 19th Street, and put a lot more housing, a lot more commercial space where people have businesses, uh, and really brought the density up. So if you bring the density up, then you can have people uh, who, who have the disposable income, the income beyond what they need to live on each month to go out and eat every night. You mentioned disposable income. What are the challenges of building inserted specific blighted urban districts? Well, the, the larger difficulty is land assemblage, uh, the vacant housing, the vacant lots. I mean, there are vacant lots and vacant houses forever. There's over 5,000 vacant houses in Kansas City. Most of those are in the third council district. And so we're in the middle of that. And you can then you add to that all the vacant lots. It's difficult for someone to come in and make an investment 
when all those negative influences are there. And we have more than 32 to 49 percent poverty rates exist. That means that people make pay 49 to 32 percent of the people in these zip codes make less than poverty level. And you're speaking from your example as being a city councilman. No, as my example of being an urban planner and a person who keep up with these matters. Really? Yes. I mean, this is, we're talking about 2012. I got out of city, uh, off of city council in 1999. 1999, okay. I'm sure you still have various experiences that you can share with us. Um, during that time, uh, 1999, Mayor Cleaver was still mayor. We know now know that he's Congressman Emmanuel right. Cleaver. I was watching Roland Martin not too long ago, and Mr. Martin was talking about the uh, services, federal services trickling down, um, economic inequalities, trying to put money into the economy to trickle down to the state and local level. Um, yesterday during the State of the Union address, President Obama says that he, one of his goals is to narrow the gap between the rich and the poor. Mr. Bacchus, how will that happen effectively? How would the money trickle down? What needs to happen for that money to trickle down right. to our front yards and our communities? But he didn't exactly identify what money, he just said money. and. And generally, what we are talking about is for people to have a good wage. First of all, they need a good job, and then that job need to make a good wage. Jobs, so, yes, definitely. jobs. Yeah. So, and the type of jobs. For for example, when Missouri, State of Missouri added some millions of dollars invested into Ford Motor Company, if they would do certain things that they created Cornwall plant. They added uh, one and a half new shifts out there. They have people working 24-7 out there, at least 24 hours a day for five to six days a week making uh, trucks and other Ford automobiles. Well, a job at General Motors will lift you out of poverty quick, mm -hmm. and, and you can be trained. Clyde McQueen can train you. Uh, Ford Motor Company will give additional training. General Motors, the same thing. Those are good quality jobs. So he's talking about... The income inequality has to do with the value of the job that, that are there. You can't do only service job. Working at McDonald's, working at Taco Bell's, they're jobs, but they're not necessarily the type of jobs that are going to lift you out of poverty. Thank you for uh, making that clear to us. Uh, Mr. Backus, we, earlier we had State Representative Randy Dunn on our show. Yes. And he kind of went into TIF financing, which I understand you were the commissioner for Tax Increment Financing Commission while you served on the city board. Can you tell us a little bit about TIF a little bit more? Yeah, I, I, I became a TIF commissioner in 1984 and served in 1981 really? under Mayor Berkeley uh, just before going to city council and served as a treasurer. So I knew a little lot about TIF at that time, though it has evolved over the years. The state statutes have changed. But our first TIF project was on the plaza uh, off 46th Street. Because West Forest Six Terrace Apartments, I forget the name of them now, but we use it as a text, test, ca test case to test the Missouri statutes um, law, and so that went really, really well. And so we have TIF now. But TIF, were, you can you can establish a TIF in Missouri, I think, under three different ways. One is um, a, a real blight. Second is a conservation area, and it has a specific definition. And then some economic issues. Let's let's just say this building, for example. Its best use is not what it is now. It may be a office building. So its best use economically is not at it, as its current use, but a 10-story office building will be worth more. So under those circumstances, you can establish a tax increment financing district, and basically the incremental difference. Let's just say this building received, uh, let's just say it's twenty thousand dollars a year in taxes. Well, the twenty thousand dollars in taxes. That are today will remain twenty thousand, so they will continue to have to pay twenty thousand a year. But the new building's value on taxes may be eight and maybe three million dollars. So you you only pay the twenty thousand. But after the period of time of the 15, 22, 23 years, the taxes go up to the three million dollar range. You start paying that. But but for TIF, that project would not go forward. So that's that's the basic design of TIF. Thank you for making that clear uh, for us. I'm thinking economic development, and I'm a big movie junkie, probably perhaps more mm -hmm. than I should be. I'm thinking Woman of Brewster Place, where you have a, a, a block uh, of crime, blighted right. areas, and you're blaming the city because they came in and put a wall there. Uh, there's an excellent book called Warmth of Other Sons by Isabel Wilkerson. She has a character in there who migrates from Mississippi to Chicago, and through three generations, she watches as her community leaders 
make promises, some are fulfilled, some aren't, and this is in Chicago. Are you pleased with the economic development that you've seen in Kansas City, Missouri? Uh, yes and no. I, I'm pleased with uh, the economic development that has occurred across the city and across our region. We have a lot to be proud of. However, in these, uh, in certain zip codes where the poverty rates are 32% to 49%, no one can be pleased with anything that's going on. So those are the areas roughly Holmes or Rock Hill all the way to 435 and Missouri River down to Hickman Mills, where the poverty rates are 32% and 64130 and about 49% everywhere else, 30 and more than 32% in the other zip codes. And so that is where um, uh, abject poverty occurs, that is, that is real and, and, and uh, real poverty and absolute uh, poverty. And so those places where things are really, really tough, we need more activity. The city developed these plans uh, for housing and economic development, but each one of those require a finite amount of resources, resources that they, necessary, they don't necessarily have. And so they try to find those dollars through the federal government. Those are trickle-down dollars in the federal system, depending on which department, whether it's EPA or Commerce or, or HUD. And so they bring those dollars in to abate or ameliorate the conditions that they find present in those plans. Randy, State Representative Randy Dunn used to be a planner with the city before he went to the state. He developed uh, the, center, the center city plan. I helped do the Van Street plan in 2010. Well, those plans are basically um, their recipes or their, or their uh, 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 plans by which block by block and show you how to redevelop these areas. But each one of them have money attached to them required to make those plans realize. I want to back up real quick. You said 32% poverty rate. Uh, we know the equity report released by Kansas City Star says Kansas City area must do a better job connecting people of color to jobs, housing, transportation, quality education, and training opportunities. Well, we're saying that ad nauseum, and we yes. can keep saying that, but how do we actually put our words into practice? And I know that you have the expertise and you have the, the experience, but is there something that my generation can do where we don't drop the ball, that we are for Obama change, that we are for supporting our congressmen, our state representatives, our city councilmen, but is there something that we can do as, as, as opposed to waiting for somebody who has the money to come and invest? Because oftentimes, more than not, it looks like they won't. Well, uh, one of the, there's several things you can do. A, continue to be involved in the community, as I know you have been, Glenn, uh, and other people. I, I chair the Urban Summit Annual um, Planning Conference. With James Tindall. With, with uh, Bishop Tindall. Bishop Tindall. And, uh, and we have a, a young professionals group that we uh, push through uh, major appointments, uh, help them uh, develop themselves. But we need you to not only continue to invest in yourself, through, particularly through education, but also we need you to live in these communities. You don't need to live in the suburbs. You need to live in Hardest City. I came here in 1980 with my family, and I have never lived anywhere um, other than 12th and, and, uh, and, and 13th and Island. I've lived uh, in, in, in Citadel, I, I off of 63rd and Paseo, for 30 years now. I live in the heart of the city, I am involved in the heart of the city, and I, and I shop in the heart of the city. So we need, to, you know, we need young people to live in the city, invest in the community by living there, and grow their families up and be involved. Well, pack up from the suburbs and come back to the city. That's harder yes. said than done. But I'm used to it. I'm a Howard University yes. alumni. I can do that. As you are at Jackson, Jackson State. Jackson State. Uh, my uh, dad's pastor, Isaiah Henderson, graduated from Jackson State, First Church Baptist Church. So I'm very aware of that. Yes. Um, can you tell us uh, a little bit about Urban Initiatives and give people an email address if they want to reach Sure. Um, uh, Urban Initiatives Group uh, is a, uh, an LSC company, and we do uh, economic development planning, we do housing development analysis, we do market studies, uh, and we do board development for nonprofit organizations. And we just generally help people in communities and nonprofit organizations. So my my email address is uh, k b a c c h u s at u i g l l c k c dot com. So k bacchus b a c c h u s at u i g l l c k c dot com. So that that's how they contact us, and we would uh, obviously be pleased to hear from people. I think our viewers will. Uh 
gain immensely from having you break down your knowledge and your experience into different segments on What's Up Kansas City. So definitely look out for Mr. Ken Backus's program. It's something that we'll be rewarding. I suggest that you watch it regularly. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky's the limit. If you shoot for the moon and you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Thank you. Very well said. Take care. What's up, Kansas City? I'm Brianna Garlington. I'm Charles Williams. And I'm Derek Parker. And we are CMG. CMG. And we would like to welcome you to follow both websites. That's whatsupkansascity.net and cascadesports.tv. Some of our programs consist of Are You Awoke, Coach's Corner, and many more interviews, news, and blogs. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram at Cascade Media Group and Twitter at What's Up KC and Cascade Sports. And remember, the victory cost success goes to the best prepared. And when you invest in your community, you are really just investing in yourself. So don't just like it, share it.